I think one of the big misconceptions is that when people think about aliens, they automatically think of the aliens they've seen in movies. Oh, great Martians. They jump straight to the mental model of the little green men, the movie Independence Day, the old War of the Worlds video drama or audio drama. I can't tell you how many people either believe they are here. That's one third of the population right there. So, you know, you can take them out of the discussion because none of this is relevant. They know the aliens not only exist, but they're here visiting Earth. I think most people and students do not have a really good understanding of the time scales in the universe. People imagine that it's much too easy to travel between stars and that it, they don't appreciate how far it is to go. How big the universe is and how hard it is to, 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 uh, to find things in it. The universe is such a big place that the notion of there being intelligent life out there does not mean it inter overlaps with us in space and in time. The, the biggest leap is between microbes and an intelligent life form, when in fact the huge gap is between non-living and living. And they believe that we will find intelligent life or things that are potentially capable of it in some sort of, um, you know, some stage of, of, of cognitive evolution. And, and so I spent a lot of time explaining that if we found bacteria someplace else, that would be amazing, that that truly was a gigantic step to go from no life to life. The biggest misconception I have come across is that, yes, if, even if they're not hominids or hominins, then there'll be some other terrestrial life form that we're familiar with. There'll be intelligent dinosaurs or intelligent dolphins or something. There's a trivial misconception, which, which is very trivial, which is it's all about looking for green aliens. And of course, you know, that is part of the question. Are we alone in the universe? But astrobiology is more than that. It's about understanding the origin of life on Earth and how our own biosphere came into existence. And in trying to answer that, trying to understand life on Earth, it, it, we want to extrapolate that knowledge to thinking about life beyond Earth. So coming at the subject thinking it's all about aliens isn't entirely wrong, but it's this perception that that's all that it's about. Astrobiologists are just a bunch of people that are, might just as well be a UFO convention, but they're slightly more scientific. And that's the first thing you have to overcome. The second thing I think that is a misconception is that many people think that astrobiology is somehow, I'm not sure how to phrase this, but let me put it very simply, an easy science. I see students come into my course and think, oh, I want to do astrobiology because it's really interesting and involves looking for alien life, and I don't want to do uh, physics because that's difficult, and, and I just don't want to do that, I want to do astrobiology. And I often have to explain to my students, astrobiology is actually more difficult than many other subjects because you have to know all those other subjects. It's, a, it's an amalgamation of subjects. To be an astrobiologist, you still have to have a, a core training in, in a conventional science because there's no such thing as disciplines. Disciplines are artificial words that, that humans make up. There's just a universe about which a civilization can, can ask questions. And astrobiology just happens to be a subset of very interesting questions that require you to cross what are traditional disciplines? Um, to understand uh, the universe in which we live and, and how likely uh, planets are, Earth-like planets, you have to know something about astrophysics and star formation and stellar evolution, that's physics and astrophysics. To understand how self-replicating molecules emerge, you have to go and talk to what we would conventionally call chemists. If you want to look at complex multicellular organisms, you've got to go and talk to people in a building who call themselves biologists. Uh, so actually astrobiology is a very challenging subject because very few of its questions sit within a traditional discipline. You have to cross disciplines and that means you have to be ready to talk to different people who maybe don't want to talk to you and say, you're a biologist, I don't want to talk to you, I'm, a, I'm an astronomer or a chemist. That's hard work. Um, so it's intellectually hard work to cross those boundaries and it's intellectually hard work to assimilate the quantity of knowledge to be able to address an astrobiology question in a, in a scientifically robust and credible way. A common misconception that I often encounter in office hours about halfway through the semester is that the student believes that I am trying to change a sacred worldview that they've been taught. And in doing so, I'm harming them. 
often, and this happens every semester that I teach an astrobiology course to, to beginning students in college, often there's an existential crisis. And one in particular comes to mind early in my career as a, as a professor. A student came in feeling very, very powerless in their ability to explain to their family members during a holiday weekend what it is that they've learned at college. Because they realized that what they had been told about the origin of life and about the Earth's place in the universe and the place of humanity in the universe had no factual basis. And the student, in their crisis, asked what I do. And I replied, I use it as a growth experience because it's part of growing up. I think what students don't appreciate initially is that we have no idea. We have so many unanswered questions. I'd say that I'd say the biggest misconception is that there's consensus on any issue in science <laughs> at all. <laughs>